Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Tower of Time. Where we left off last time, we were in the uh, Deva world yet again, finding some pretty terrible loot actually. We can get plus one might, we'll do that on our... yeah sure. And we also found an obsidian crust aura, increases armor by five in an eight meter radius for leg armor. Good. I need to go back out here though. We missed some gold. There we go. Alright, so we are just past the last area we were in, the Kraken Time Space is over there. Oh, we can go back now. Oh, does that mean these portals are open? Can we check? If they are, we should go kill everything in them. It looks like the energy barriers are still up. Can we open them though. I am very curious to see if we can. I doubt we'll be able to, but I would like to finish these encounters. Maybe we have to finish this thing first. You know what? Let's just finish the level technically and then we'll come back and see if we can open them. It looks like we still have four battles or three battles to go. As well as five chests, one blueprint, one side quest, and two main quests. As the party slowly makes their way to exit the room, dodging and ducking the objects swirling at high velocity, Eric is hit in the back of the head. The object seems unaffected by the turbulence, giving the object rise and tumbles to stop at his feet. He also retrieves the object, unfurling a 30-inch parchment covered in elvish prose. This is the elvish tale of Gilia, the bard written in academic formal. Very few elves can write in this manner. Take it if you must, but keep moving. Following the shield guard's advice, your party eventually makes its way to the archway, exit with little more than a few scrapes, bruises, and a heavy, and heavy with a few uneventful scrolls and books. Okay. We're fine then, nothing bad happened. Looks like another testing ground up north there. Let's check down here. There's a fountain. As your champions press on, the world around them begins to move in slow motion. Their voices draw deep and distorted, a disorienting effect that Challenges your connection to them. Struggling to regain control, you realize it's not the world itself which is slowing, but your champions themselves. They move more and more slowly with each passing breath. When they finally come to a standstill, a strange yet familiar voice rises up against their concentration. It is because of them I come to you now. Why do you affect them so? They don't deserve to be turned on and off like some constructs. Can you not let them be? You're progressing well indeed, boy. I am pleased. How so? These Deva creatures communicate primarily through emotion. As such, this place exerts strained pressures on Ar Artarians. They will turn your guidance in the trials ahead, not because they're unable to answer for themselves, but because deep down, they realize they are being influenced. I will not add to such influences and force decisions on them, as you wish, but they will look to you to equalize the influences against them, to remind their conscious selves of who they truly are. In the end, the choice is yours. The choice is always yours. Without waiting for a reply, the pressure in your mind eases and your champions once again move and speak normally. The discussion, though short, was surprisingly taxing. Maintaining the connection to your party grows increasingly difficult. We should probably check out the fountain. It is a good one, and mana increased by 10, which is good because she's actually at a severe mana disadvantage right now. A Deva Construct, guarding an energy barrier. A Deva Construct stands before your party. Its eyes are bright green, it motions for you to near, and as your party cautiously approaches, it speaks in its familiar metallic sound. Beyond this door awaits your trial. After all this, and we haven't started yet? Quiet, High Courier. Are you ready for the grand trials? Not yet. I think we should go do the last button trial up here first. An energy barrier shuts down the passage behind your champions as they enter this area. Three enclaves to the side are also blocked. A familiar response matrix is in the middle. Three dazzling orbs appear in front of your party, crackling with raw energy and pulsating slowly. Unusual for David to arrive in such, a ma uh, in such a number. They speak in a deep, booming voice, echoing in the chamber. You pass through the pathways? That was not certain. We are pleased. Time for the last test before the grand trial. There was one thing to which about you to which was a puzzle to us. We were troubled. 
Uncertain, confused, now we see the strings attached and we know. Do you know? Look into yourself and answer truthfully and the prize shall be bestowed upon you. Contradict yourself and perish. When you are ready, light the symbol as you've been shown before. Do you have free will? Oh man, that's a good question. Probably not, because we're exerting our influence. Technically, they don't have free will. That's a lie. You do not see yourselves as slaves. Okay, reloading. So we're not slaves. We have somewhat of free will. Yes, we expected that you were not certain. You must feel it now, stronger and stronger. Two voices vying for your attention ever since you set foot in this tower of yours. That's what we wanted. Not that I don't want to fight the creatures, but... What's the exotic staff do? Pretty decent as well. We're gonna take a big look at all of our new items later. We haven't had any trouble with fights for a while, so I'm not too concerned. But we're gonna have to do some rebalancing of all of our gear. Now we're ready for the trial. Yes, we are. The Deva will judge your trinity. Pass, and help will be granted. Fail, and the Deva will leave this outpost at Artara and to the Orgonte. Morality is not a concern of ours, only the truth of trinity. The test will not be easy and the consequences will be significant. Prove yourselves. Deva's construct's eyes then dim. Its body goes limp, and a small wisp of energy flees from it, vanishing into the air. Wait, do you feel... Suddenly there is a bright flash. Cain, Maeve, and Eric disappear into thin air. A slight distortion in the air marks the place where they had been standing just a moment ago. You are confused as the rest of your party. You can feel your link to the missing champions, but it is distant as if behind an invisible wall. What in the name? Cain? Eric? Stop hiding, this is not funny. A lone Deva appears in front of your reduced party and announces in a solemn tone. The grand trial has begun. Do not be alarmed. Your companions are being judged now. What? What? They're being judged by incomprehensible beings and you tell us not to be alarmed? What madness is this? Who do you think you are? Return our friends to us at- And as outraged Whisper is issuing her demand, you feel a strange pull on your mind and then you notice that it's being forced to focus on a different place. You have no ability to resist this unknown force. I guess we're going to the trial. They are aware of you. You are too drained to respond. They don't want you to influence the outcome of their little game. Or they may fear you, perhaps both. But as powerful as they are, they are narrow-minded beings. Here, boy, I give you a portion of my power. Whether or not you choose to influence your companions, it's up to you. But I will not allow the David to steal that choice from you. Maeve Marlowe. Who do you serve first, thy lord or thyself? Myself. Enter the door and be judged. As Maeve steps through the door, she enters the chamber filled from floor to ceiling with riches. Incredibly detailed recreations, or recreations of light illuminated and partially transparent. Though they are not quite real, the marksman is still in awe. The riches before you are real. They are a cache of dwarven wealth in a tomb long forgotten. Maeve reaches down and actually plucks one of the gemstones of light from its resting place. The stone is nearly as big as her palm. As she expects to inspects the treasure, an armored figure appears amidst the treasure. He walks towards Maeve, drawing a sword, nearly as large as his body. This warrior guards the lower chamber of the tower. He must be defeated to reach the tower's bottom, yet it is unlikely your companions will locate him on their own. Ask us and we will teleport you to the dwarven treasure chamber. You will have no trouble removing the riches and can live out the rest of your days in wealth and comfort. However, you will be unable to return to the tower and unable to complete the lord's task. Alternatively, you may choose to fight this warrior and move yourself one critical step closer to the Lord's goal. The choice is yours. Maeve wells up with temptation unlike anything you've ever felt. Her desire is intoxicating, but something is holding Maeve back. The faith both you and Cain have in her. Though she does not turn directly towards you for help, you can sense the curiosity deep within her. Perhaps a subtle suggestion is in order. Fight the warrior. The room explodes in a blindingly bright flash. When Maeve's eyes suggest she is standing before the armored warrior, no longer is an image of transparent light, but made of flesh and blood. It raises its massive sword and charges to attack. Instantly, the marksman moves to defend herself. We were fighting alone against that many things. Ah, oh, we should be okay. I'm not too concerned.
We'll stand dead center. We'll have a... Which side has the most enemies? Probably that one. It's not cool that they have ranged attacks. I guess we do have health regen over time, though. We need to regen some mana. How much is it for our phantom bow? 60. We should have enough. guys. Can't even get an attack off at this rate. This guys have a lot of armor. Those guys don't have as much. They die pretty fast. A solo fight. We succeeded. Overwhelmed by the visitants you have experienced, your mind is yanked back to your remaining champions. What's surprising you notice that only a fraction of, of a second has passed here. And Whisper is just finishing her demand. At once or you shall feel the wrath of the Shadow Queen. Be calm, Scholar Whisper. This will avail us nothing. Let's continue on with our journey. The Deva did not show any signs of hostility to us before, so there's nothing to expect that they are intent on harming our companions. Let's hope that they will be returned to us shortly. We try to calm their furious and at the same time worried minds. After a short while, they regain enough composure to move forward again. Oh dear, we're an entirely different group now. We have two of our good people. At least it's kind of split nice and evenly, I guess. Rackham's only level 5, though, so he's going to have some trouble here. But let's give him a better weapon, at least. I just smacked my... ...microphone by accident. Alright, it's time to look at gear, I suppose. Free speed, we lose some armor, but we lose some cooldown. And we get a skill power increase. We get more health. Or no, we don't. We get more movement speed. I think I'll take those. Ring of mana. Regenerates one mana every second. It's our mana regen. It's pretty good. Go keep the mastery one. Bow versus gun. I think the guns are better. I guess that's all for maybe boots. Oh yeah, we can get her some way better boots. She doesn't even have boots. Tree might versus nothing. Tree might it is. And that looks to be what about her helmet? No, her helmet's better. Okay. Whisper, what do you got? Okay, so there's this really cool staff, six mastery, which is pretty fantastic. 
we would lose mana seal and we would lose two might. I'm okay losing both those things. What did we get? What's negative for using it? Nothing, it's just really good all around. Okay then. We also have two other staves. Might be good, but we'll take a look at them in a second. Health and mana increase 5% is pretty nice. Losing two mastery would kind of suck. What's the other one? Oh, plus three mastery. Okay, so let's just, just straight up upgrade then. Plus three speed ring versus two life or two might and two life. I think I'm going to take the speed ring. Plus we're immune to blind. Oh no, we're not. That's the other ring. Well, yeah, we're still immune to blind, but even so. Mana pen, attack speed, movement speed, armor penetration. Okay. It's fine the way it is. No decent pants. I guess that's her for now. Oron is not in our group. I don't know if he's supposed to be. And neither is Rackham, but uh, we'll just continue on and see if we have to use them or not. If there's a fight up ahead, we'll definitely swap to them. There's a treasure chest over here. Uh oh, something's happening. Kane Gundrick. When may duty yield to personal passions? Only in the matters of the heart, where love and happiness are at risk of being lost forever. Enter the door and be judged. As your shield guard steps to the door, your connection with him wanes. His voice fades, his emotions dwindle, and the sensations he feels all but disappear to you. How can you lose connection now before the first trial? Panicked, you focus all your remaining energy and will on Kane, but there's no change. Only duller and softer stimuli. Exhausted, you slump down in your crystal throne in defeat. But as you close your eyes, a sudden tension grips every fiber of your being. As the mysterious voice fades from your mind, your body tingles. Your mind clears and you not only feel fresh and well-rested, but more energetic than you've felt in years. Your connection to Kane grows stronger than it's ever been. You can feel every minute detail, feeling, and thought as the shield guard enters a familiar surrounding, the King's Guard Training Guild. Debris, the Master of Arms, stands talking to an unfamiliar guard. Both men appear not as normal humans, but as incredibly detailed recreations of light, illuminated and partially transparent. No, illusions. These representations are real. These two men are together now in Artara. Do you recognize them? The older gentleman is my King's Man at Arms, not the young guard. The young guard, Articus, competes for the position of King's Champion in your absence. It's a lofty title, but one with many restrictions. One infraction and his name will be revoked. I remember the process well. What does this have to do with me? Watch, listen. Yes, Commander. Why were you late to your post last night? Sir, I... Blasted boy, are you really going to throw everything you've worked so hard for over a woman? Sir, I... You're not leaving me any choice. It's my duty to report any instances like this to the King. He does not pick any champion lightly. All I need is one piece of clear evidence and you're finished here. Outside, a second guard waits to supply evidence. We can sway Dupri's decision with a simple suggestion. Decide now. Shall we let evidence come forth? Denying Articus's rank and likely reducing or resulting in the dismissal from the King's Guard to his passions, excuses, lapses, and duty. I don't see what this has to do with me. I. We know everything you know, everything you feel. You cannot hide your desires or intentions from us. Will you condemn a man, a fellow guard, for the very crime you've committed and gotten away with? Harboring feelings for your comrades in arms, sacrificing your duty for personal passions? You sense the nervousness and shame of your champion, struggling with the dilemma, just as the mysterious voice predicted. Kane reaches out to you. With his subconscious thoughts asking for help, what answer do you suggest? Don't condemn the man. After much internal thought, the Master of Arms waves his hand and dismisses the guard. My good graces are not indefinite. With a look of surprise on his face, Articus quickly heads for the exit, and tell the guard waiting to see me he is no longer needed. Oh, and that time we didn't have to fight. Which is a good thing, because I think that Kane doesn't have any gear on him, and we can't change his equipment, so... Two-handed swords, some gold, and gems. There's another chest down here. Wait, let's go up to that room. There's a couple things going on there. We can save before going in in case it's deadly. There's a portal button. I pressed the button. It did 
not do anything. Both portals are blocked by force fields. So we definitely can't go that way then. Another chest. I've noticed that these glimmery chests don't actually open when you press on them. They sort of stay there. Ooh, crystals. There is a fight up ahead. More crystals. Which means we do need to fix up our group. Alright. What do we got for weapons and stuff? You just give them all the titan plate. But it all lowers movement speed. I mean, it's kind of nice stuff, though. Let's watch our speed. Movement speed is 7, 6, 5, 4.7. 4.4. That's actually not too bad. Okay. So he's got all that gear on. What about the gloves? 4.1. His armor is pretty high, though. 62 armor. The thorns. He'll be fine. Hmm. Yeah, we needed to give him a weapon. We don't have a whole lot of two-handed weapons. I guess we can give him two one-handed weapons, though. Or just, like, one great sword, I guess. Or you can go sword and shield. We don't need to give them great equipment. They're not going to be in our group for very long. Probably. Alright, something along those lines will be good. We have a spare amulet of some sort. Yeah, we do. Okay. Actually, you know what? What's this amulet do? We should take that one off. Give this one to him, because it's got more armor. That armor will help him with his thorns ability. Hopefully that'll help with this upcoming fight. Alright. Let's go in. There's another portal button there. Oh, it's a portal match. I like portal matches. Okay. At least we have our Titan with us. And we have a person in Titan armor. So that's really like two Titans. If you think about it. I don't even remember what these guys' abilities are. Like, at all. He's so slow. He needs to get in there first. Do you have any movement because we're doing... No, he doesn't. He doesn't have any movement abilities. He just moves very slowly. Ponderously, even. Okay. Titan. You should probably go into the melee group and get that thorns on everybody. Do you have anyone that has healing of any sort? Just the ruined hammers that he has. Crap.
All right, that should be fine, I think. Oh god, our little level characters are so bad. I hope there's only the two. There's one more portal, isn't there? Yep. Okay, one more portal to go. You two get in there. Then we'll summon the rest of our stuff in. Somebody just flat out died. It was Rackham. Not really sure what he died too. Or Boron, sorry, not Rackham. Almost killed the portal. That's really the important. Oh, the portal's dead. Okay, good. Just the last enemy now. We really should level up those other characters eventually. If we have the gold for it. Because it was kind of painful fighting without them, to be honest. Next one Eric. Eric, elf of the endless forest. Does necessity justify theft? The law of possession states that only those strong enough to retain a thing may rightfully possess that thing. As such, theft is the way of the natural world. Enter the door and be judged. I guess sounds very Eric. As a druid steps through the door, he enters a chamber filled without walls or a ceiling. Beyond the perimeter of the stone floor, strange yet familiar trees rise up all around. The trees are incredibly detailed recreations of light, illuminated and partially transparent. Eric stands mesmerized by the sight. After a few moments, the druid realizes small gnomish creatures stand among the greenery. It has a basket at its side filled with rare herbs not seen in Artara for 3,000 years. Mixed in with the herbs is a large, life oak seed, a true seed, the very object Eric is searching for. No illusions, these representations are real. From a time long past, but real. And to us, it is as if they were occurring at this very moment. A life oak seed? Creature of the wood, you must part with this item. Name your price and you shall have it. Alas, poor druid, these creatures do not see or hear you. The window we look through only works in one direction. This, this is a trick, an illusion. No illusion. We see a past which has not come to pass. But this creature will not listen to reason. He cannot be swayed or bartered with. If you truly wish to possess the life oak seed, there is only one option. Reach out and take it. You must steal it. Will you take that which is not yours? Give us the word and we will bring it across time and space to the tower. But be warned. You know not what intentions this creature has for the seed. You sense deep regret from your champion as Eric struggles with the dilemma. You can sense his thoughts much more clearly than usually. There can only be one reason. He is opening up to your influence so willingly. He searches for help. Will you suggest a course of action? I'm willing to bet that that's the progenitor seed for this world, and if we take it, a terrible thing will happen. Eric reaches towards the life seed, life oak seed, image of light. As if to snatch it from the barrel, the small creature perks up and turns, looking in Eric's direction, forcing the elf to hesitate. After a slight pause of indecision, Eric withdraws his hand and steps back, stealing his wrong. Even in these most dire circumstances, I will not accept this gift you offer, as grand and as precious as it is, for it is not yours to offer. As you wish. The illuminated imagery of the forest vanishes, leaving Eric in a cold stone chamber, a look of anguish plain on his face. Perhaps it is less painful to know this, the creature's life oak seed will become the second tree of Artos, the elven city of legend. Should you have taken it, the city would have fallen to trolls and goblins 2,000 years ago. Your choice saved many elvish lives. I knew it! I totally called it. Let's go 
we'll press the button and then we'll call it a video. There's a David there. Alright, we're gonna call it here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. I'll just see you next time. Take care.